Families of victims and survivors of the mass shooting in Uvalde have been coming to the state capitol regularly this session. They've called for tighter gun laws, but with little success. Wednesday marked one year since 19 children and two teachers died at Robb Elementary. That date is bringing new attention to changes made and not made after the tragedy. Our Monica Madden takes a closer look at gun laws after Uvalde. I don't want to honor her life her legacy with action. Parents Kim and Felix Rubio never imagined becoming activists. I was perfectly content with just being a mom of five children in a small town. Their contentedness ripped away by an 18-year-old gunman who killed their youngest daughter, Lexi. Last year. One year ago at Robb Elementary School. Lexi didn't deserve this. None of those children did. Those two teachers didn't. In the last year, pain has fueled their fight. At the nation's capital, pleas and protests from Uvalde families helped push rare federal action on gun laws. This effort was about the art of the possible. Senator John Cornyn led the passage of the Safer Communities Act. It created a seven-day review process for the FBI to check firearm purchases for those under the age of 21 and clarified requirements for federally licensed firearm dealers. We've seen a 52% increase in federal prosecutions for unlicensed firearms dealers. Is there more to be done? As policymakers, we ought to always be open to suggestions that uh, people have about how to make it, how to save lives. Republicans like Cornyn have expressed there is a line. We haven't figured out how to stop all of them, um, but I'm, I'm confident that the answer is not uh, to deprive law-abiding gun owners of their constitutional right to keep and bear arms. Loose gun laws have allowed guns to proliferate to anybody and everybody. State Senator Roland Gutierrez, a Democrat who represents well, Uvalde, no, no, no. wants a different approach. We have to start looking at the common denominator, which is too many guns in too many wrong hands. Holding regular press conferences with Uvalde families, he made guns his top issue this session. You know, I've been all about this session about protecting children, my friend, and we haven't done a whole lot of protecting the children when it comes to guns and ammunition. A doomed effort from the start with strong opposition in a Republican-dominated state. They didn't shatter any expectations for me. I pretty much knew what we were looking at going into this thing, but I felt like we needed to have the discussion. None of his bills got a hearing, but in the House... <laughs> The bill proposing to raise the age limit for purchasing semi-automatic weapons advanced out of committee. Two Republicans voted yes just days after another mass shooting in Allen. It's a reminder that change is possible to see some sort of progress. It meant the world to me. While that bill never got a floor vote, next time around we'll be better prepared. Families like the Rubios are not giving up. We'll get what we wanted, but we still won't have Lexi. And that was, that was hard. That'll, that'll be a hard day. Monica Madden, State of Texas. Congressman Tony Gonzalez represents Uvalde in Washington. He was the only Texas Republican to vote for the Safer Communities Act. Monica spoke with the congressman about the backlash he still faces after voting for gun legislation. I want to ask you to reflect on the Safer Communities Act that was passed in the wake of the mass shooting in Uvalde. Of course, in the aftermath and the year since then, we have seen countless other mass shootings. Do you think there is still more work to be done on that aspect? Yeah, I was I was very I was very proud to work on the uh, bipartisan Safer Community Act and to get that over the finish line. It was the first piece of legislation uh, of that type in, in over in over three decades. But it was only the start. There's a lot more we have to do. There's a lot more that uh, that still needs to happen. You're seeing it every day. Um, as far as these the school violence that is that is throughout the country, uh, one of the things that you see in, in Congress is we pass these pieces of legislation and we're very quickly we're very quick to pat ourselves on the back. I just did it 10 seconds ago. But uh, part of it is that that uh, we have to bring those dollars from Washington back to Texas until those dollars are in our schools. They don't exist. And might as well that piece of legislation not exist. And that's been the next phase, if you will. Uh, after the safe, after the passing of the Safer's Community Act, is to go. What what now? A big part of that is to get ahead of the problem. How do you identify a problem? You know, with a child years in advance. And so uh, I'll, I've been working with the um, with the Department of Justice to do just that. Bring those dollars back home. Um, you know, also in the aftermath of passing that act, you expressed 
it, not necessarily openness, but we're on the fence about a measure that we've seen the families really call for, and that's to raise the age limit needed to purchase a semi-automatic weapon from 18 to 21. You said that at the time that you wanted to wait and see the effects of the Safer Communities Act. I'm curious where you stand on that specific call one year later. You know, since the Safer Community Act has been signed into law, there's been at least 160 cases in which a minor that uh, should not have uh, purchased a firearm was was stopped. And I think that's a success. I think we have to build on that. Uh, a lot of times folks want to go to the end of the problem and talk about age limits or, or uh, uh, weapons bans or these other different things. Politically, that can't get done right now. Uh, and so I, I'm less focused on the things that can't get done, and I'm more focused on the things that can get done. Uh, mental health is a big part of it, but there has to be beyond mental health. There has to be other measures. Speaking to the political fallout that we saw in the aftermath of Uvalde, specifically, too, after the Safer Communities Act was passed, you were one of the uh, handful of Republicans who crossed over to vote in favor of that and ended up getting censured by two GOP parties in your district, partially for that. There was, of course, another vote. But I'm curious, you know, do you still view it as that was worth it? And would you vote for it again if it were in front of your desk today? I, I voted in favor of the uh, Safer's Community Act uh, for, for a couple of reasons. But the main one was if that bill was law, it would have prevented the Uvalde shooting. That is more than enough for me to take any arrows from anyone in my party. Yes, I got censured by the Republican Party of Texas for it, but oh well, you know, it's the right thing to do. I spent 20 years in the military, five years in, in Iraq and Afghanistan. I always do what I think is right, uh, regardless of, of, uh, of what I'm up against. And, and honestly, I think Texans agree. We need to take care of our kids. Everyone is anxious about what is happening in the world right now whether it's in school or elsewhere, but I mean, children deserve the right to feel safe at school. You know, when, when I was a child, uh, school was my sanctuary. I spent, I spent time in a battered women's shelter in, in San Antonio. So home was, was a, a very chaotic environment. School was where I went to, to seek refuge. That, 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 ha that can't change. School has to be a safe space where people can come and, and grow and develop and, 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 and smile, if you will. And so, uh, yes, uh, you know, I took some I took some flack for voting for the Safer's Community Act. I was only one of 14 Republicans, the only Republican in Texas. But if that were if that vote were today, I would vote the exact same way. I think it's important that we take care of school, uh, take care of our children in schools. And once again, this is only the start. The bipartisan Safer's Community Act was only the start. We have to do more. Part of that is delivering the resources back home. But we honestly, we have to have a, a, a frank conversation. Let's uh, and that, that's a big part of this. Uh, bipartisan uh, uh, safer schools and safety caucus is, hey, come to the table, let's sit down, let's have real conversations, maybe uncomfortable conversations, but let's sit down and have real fruitful conversations and figure out what can get done politically here in Washington. You heard Gonzalez mention the Bipartisan School Safety and Security Caucus. He announced the formation of that caucus this past Monday. Gonzalez teamed up with Democrat Jared Moskowitz from Florida. He represents Parkland, Florida, where a school shooting in 2018 killed 17 students. The caucus aims to work across party lines on solutions to improve school safety. A bill to expand medical cannabis in Texas has officially gone up in smoke what it would have changed, and why proponents think it's necessary. 